Hey y'all, today we have something really special. You're not going to believe it. After all the times that we have tried to find a way to prevent carbon buildup on the direct injection engine or GDI, well, we actually have a solution. Now, let's take it from the start. So, if you want to prevent carbon buildup, you want to take every measure possible. And that includes the engine oil, which is, well, basically the problem. So, they've come out with an engine oil with a certification or rating SN plus which is great for GDI engines but alone it's not enough Valvoline's a great example Valvoline modern engine that's one of the great direct injection oils for a turbo as well now the way we started this I decided to look into the matter a little bit closer now, you all know about the oil catch cans. Well, they definitely make a big difference. But, then again, it's still not enough. So, I decided to look into how this process really happens to see if there's anything we could uh, tweak a little bit to make a big difference. And it turns out that when the vapor coming from the crankcase through the PCV system starts to cool down this is what we can take advantage of so how could i allow it to cool before it entered the oil catch can even more so well i extended the tubing the vacuum tubing and once i extended this tubing i mean you can see the proof right here incredible difference i mean the amount of carbon buildup is almost non-existent so Every about 10,000, 20,000 miles or so, you know, I'll take a can of, say, CRC, go out there, give it a couple squirts, just to make sure, and I'll keep observing it. Now, I'm really loving this. I can't believe it. So, there was another big issue that I ran into, and I want you guys to know about this. This is actually probably even worse. After looking at the engine oil, unfortunately, once I pulled the cap off, I noticed there was a big problem. And actually, it seemed like, um, it almost seemed like maybe there was water in the oil. But once I compared it to the oil catch can, um, what I had looked at previously from uh, videos I would made from the beginning of having this car, a 2014 Hyundai Elantra GT, well, it looked almost identical, so I decided to send it to a lab, and unfortunately, yeah, it's definitely um, gas in the oil, so I'm definitely not liking this. But since I switched over to this SN Plus oil, that should take care of the problem, or, well, it won't stop the problem, but it'll definitely help. Now we're going to try something else to solve that problem see if we can help with that situation that's one of the worst things about these uh, GDI engines or the turbo engines as well you know with the increased pressure um, higher temperatures um, fuel dilution but there's many advantages as well too as we all know now you guys know just like I do that most all cars will be direct injection soon and I mean very soon we've already had about 50% of the vehicles go to a, a turbo engine or a GDI engine because they have really strict fuel standards that they have to meet especially by 2025 so I heard a ridiculous amount I mean something like 54.5 miles per gallon which yeah, I believe that when I see it. You know, there's always something that they do to work around all this. Um, electric cars, yeah. Well, because they don't use gas, so <laughs> I won't be no 50 some miles a gallon. Now, I wanted to share that with you guys, but allow me to do some further testing with this oil catch can setup to make sure that this is actually uh, safe to be using long term. So you don't want to try this quite yet, but I really wanted to share it with you guys 
and any other tips that you could share with us um, or experiences bad ones that you've had like my oil situation yeah please make sure you share that with everyone because this could prevent someone's engine from being damaged or maybe someone will give you a tip that could help you out as always guys i want to thank you for watching nate's interactive auto